My name is Bobby Jindal, and I'm a wildlife photographer for National Geographic magazine. I'm always inspired by animals and capturing their movements through my camera. It gives me and the audience a true inspiration. But lately, I had a problem. Rather than capturing the beauty and happiness of animals, more and more, I see them struggling. The culprit, our plastic. This is why I set out to find a solution to this problem. See, this year's cover of National Geographic magazine was chosen by our subscribers. The rare brown-tailed rabbit was a beautiful creature, but its health was being put at risk due to the pollution in its environment. So I've set out in the hopes of capturing one of these creatures in the wild and showing the world how beautiful they really are. So that they will see the types of species being put at risk by polluting their environment with plastics and other garbage. On my search to capture the brown-tailed rabbit, the people living in this nearby community led me to this pond where they said a brown-tailed rabbit might live. How could this happen? What is your problem, my child? Guruji, there's plastic everywhere. 13,000 pieces of plastic for every square kilometer of the ocean. Plastic accumulates in landfills in the natural environment, and it builds up in the intestines of animals and slowly kills them. My son, the problem is that our current plastic usage is not sustainable. Plastic is nothing but large, unnatural carbon polymer units. Polystyrene, polyamides, polyethylene, and polyethylene terephthalate. Decomposers cannot break these large, unnatural compounds. How can we get rid of this plastic? The solution is in nature, my son. It's just up to you to find it. Big problems have small solutions. No, don't leave! What is all this? I guess I better start cleaning all of this up. Hey, stop! Stop right there! Hey, what are you doing? Stop right there! Stop right now! Hey, what do you think you're doing? Put that down, I need those! What do you mean? I'm just trying to clean up the plastic. I mean, it's killing all these animals out here. Well, for the last couple of weeks, I've been researching archaebacteria living in the swamp. As you know, bacteria evolved to their environment. And I think a couple of samples in here might be able to break down polyethylene terephthalate. What are you talking about? Well, to dumb it down for you, bacteria make plastic go bye-bye. Look, I'm not that stupid, but I like what you're doing. I want to help you. How can you help me? Oh, take this bottle and get me some samples from that pond over there. Alright, sure thing. So this is what Guruji was talking about. Oh goody, you brought me my samples. Yeah, here you go. Come on, let's go back to my lab and analyze these. Okay. Six and a half hours later. Hello, uh, testing, one, two, three. Uh, Jindal, is this thing working? It looks like it. Yep, you're good. This is Dr. Jan Yamato here, day one of our research. We have successfully isolated a bacteria from the sample. I decided to call it Edanola secundensis. Hey, Kano is SUS bacteria. Um, no, this is the scientific journal. Anyways, the bacteria produces an enzyme which breaks down PET, but a lot more research must be conducted. 3.28 AM. We are fast. Jindal, turn it down. I should be dancing, whipping on the way. Anyways, we, we are on day five of our research. 
we are fast approaching success. Uh, very few esterases, lipids, or cutinases are capable of hydrolyzing PET, but this one does the job. It uses two enzymes, one breaks PET into MHAT, and the other turns into ethylene glycol and terephilic acid, both the original components used to make it. Imagine a cycle where PET is made, broken down, and then made again. Many months later. Day 17. Jindal, get that! Yep, sure thing, boss. Hey, Yamato. Yeah, what is it? Th they're selling chocolates. What? Chocolates. Do you want chocolate? Oh, jolly darn. I remember when they first started selling those. Anyways, unfortunately, um, this bacteria takes over six weeks for a single PET strip. It seems like this enzyme activity is too low to use in industrial applications. Back to the drawing board, it seems. Several bad puns later. Dr. Yamato, day 38. We've been hard at work, made some progress. <sighs> this place is a mess. Jindal's been no help. Jindal, clean that up! Yo, what'd you say, man? I'm always wasting my time around here. No appreciation. Anyways, through simple genetic recombination, I inserted two enzyme controlling genes, ISF6 4831 and 4832. They are both inserted to plasmids for bacteria. As with the case with E. coli, by increasing the number of genes coding for the enzyme, we increase the production of enzyme overall. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting, and they had to hire a new one. So bright. Um, day uh, 420, Dr. Yamato here, um, making some huge progress as always. Jindal doing an amazing job. Um, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm just some... Uh, Jindal, give me that, what are you doing? Uh, nothing, nothing boss. Uh. Sorry everyone for that delay. This is the real Dr. Yamato, back again, day 420. We have finally reached success. To increase industrial applications, the bacteria can have its own DNA change with controlled lab mutagenesis. This intentional changing of nitrogenous bases can result in new improved enzyme structures. As with allocase and detergents, this bacteria can be made to survive in a wide range of temperatures, pH, and produce the new improved enzyme. Jindal, grab the JD. It's time to celebrate. Let's go, boss. Wow. Ever since the introduction of this new bacterium Dr. Yamato and I created, the plastics have virtually disappeared in the environment. Animals like the brown-tailed rabbit no longer have to worry about consuming these harmful plastics which block their intestinal tracts and slowly kill them. This is an amazing sight. Now these animals can live in peace and we can fully enjoy their beauty. Wow, these truly are magnificent creatures.